I am Mike Stanton, September 10th. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm here with Dan Bingham and Brian Babler from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to the fall. Uh, when we uh, last uh, post our last weekly update, Dan, uh, you were talking about extreme stability in the muni market, uh, very little, uh, few movements in yields. Two weeks later, uh, I think you can say the same thing. Uh, what have you observed in the meantime? Sure. Uh, yeah, more or less the same thing. We have seen a little bit of a, a pressure on the treasury side of the equation today. Um, and as, as somewhat typical, the muni market is not keeping pace. So you've got muni municipal market outperformance. The 10-year treasury uh, currently at a 134 and the 30-year at a 194. Um, interesting, uh, one of the thing comments we've talked a lot about was the ratio Right, the percentage of the municipal market relative to the treasury equivalent. Um, and that ratio had gotten very, very extended to very low levels, indicating a very rich municipal market. Um, and we have seen some adjustment in that um, as the 10 year uh, ratio is currently 72% and the 30 year uh, ratio is back to 80%, which we hadn't seen in a while. So a little bit better. Um, or a more favorable environment for municipal investors um, that are looking at that. So it's uh, it's an interesting point in here as um, treasury yields are going up a little bit, that munis are actually offering a better ratio. And from that investor side, uh, really no signs of slowing in investor demand for the market. Uh, this week, uh, Lipper reported uh, the strongest weekly inflows to municipal bond mutual funds uh, since January. Yeah, and that's, you know, typically we, we go through some pretty predictable seasonal patterns with June, July, and August being very favorable as we roll into September, though that tends to go against the, the market. And we'll certainly see that with uh, the supply demand dynamic in that um, issuance should exceed the amount of bonds being refunded and called out of the market. Um, but, but you're right, the uh, very surprising thing is sort of record inflows into the municipal asset class um, as we're rolling into a period that tends to have seasonal pressures against it. So Brian, when we get you involved in the conversation, talk about what we've seen in the new issue market. As expected during the holiday period, uh, total volume was relatively uh, low the last two weeks. Uh, BAM was quite active this past week. What, the, what did you see? Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, you know the holidays definitely have an impact on uh, on new issue supply, and uh, and it was a pretty benign calendar this week. Uh, so I think we only saw around you know seven billion or so uh, that came to market, which was still a decent amount uh, considering the market was closed Monday and and the observance of uh, Rosh Hashanah Tuesday Wednesday. So um, overall, you know uh, the market continued to be pretty stable. New issues were priced pretty um, uh, pretty efficiently. Uh, and as you mentioned, BAM had a very uh, robust week. We priced over 400 million uh, in the new issue market. That was led by a, a double A minus transaction for West Harris uh, Regional Water Authority in Texas, uh, which was priced by Jeffries, um, uh, as well as a, a taxable deal for Charter Oak School District in California, which was priced by RBC. And then in the competitive market, um, we were used by R.W. Baird on a College of Charleston deal uh, in South Carolina. So overall, uh, you know, some really good activity. We continue to see the themes playing out that we've been mentioning for uh, for several months now uh, of, of insurance continuing to help with distribution on um, on higher quality. You know, again, that rest, West Harris Regional Water, uh, a great example of that, uh, as well as some others. So. Um, you know, the, the penetration side for, uh, for insurance on the new issue market continues to be pretty, uh, pretty strong. That's right. Double A minus underlying S&P rating on the West Harris County uh, Regional Water Authority. That's also a BAM Green Star transaction. Uh, it's uh, for water supply uh, investments and so qualifies uh, under the green bond principles. Uh, looking ahead to next week, uh, what's, uh, what's looking out for? Next week, uh, market finally shakes off the uh, the end of summer slumber, um, and we kind of get back into the swing of things. So, uh, for all those uh, fun flows, we'll, they'll actually have some bonds to uh, to chew on, and actually a decent amount of uh, of the supply is uh, is going to be tax exempt. So, you know that's been a, a relationship that's been bouncing back and forth um, that people uh, are are always citing and talking about um, the relative tax exempt supply, um, which has been you know, on some weeks gets eaten up by about 30, 35% of taxables. 
Um, but uh, of the 12 billion or so that's scheduled to price next week, I believe it's, uh, it's a little over 10 uh, that's expected to be tax exempt. Uh, that's really gonna be highlighted by a 2 billion plus deal for uh, the state of California. And then there's some other, you know, larger chunky deals that are that are occupying the top of uh, of the new issue slate. But, uh, you know, for uh, for a you know decent uh, decent week at 12 billion, um, we're expecting to have another uh, fairly busy week. We've got uh, 170 million for Mount Diablo uh, USD in California. Uh, that's a negotiated transaction that's going to be priced by Stiefel. Uh, a 60 million dollar deal uh, for Tulsa Airport in Oklahoma. Uh, which is a uh, majority of that deal is going to be taxable. Uh, that's going to be priced by RBC. And then a, a $48 million transaction for Limestone County Board of Ed in Alabama is expected to be priced uh, by Raymond James. So, uh, you know, we're expecting uh, probably north of $300 million. Uh, the competitive calendar is going to be pretty active at, a, at around $2 billion. Uh, so there will be a fair amount of opportunities uh, in the competitive space as well. Um, so we're expecting another uh, another busy week. And some uh, fairly important fiscal discussion still going on in Washington, D.C. Uh, the Democrats are working on their reconciliation bill. Um, so far, Dan, any surprises? Anybody uh, looking uh, to expect that, that will have an impact on uh, market supplier demand dynamic? You know, the, I, I think the back and forth that's been going on has been taking so long that people have become I don't want to say immune to it, but they sort of put it on the back burner. Um, the final package, when and if passed, um, obviously the details could have pretty dramatic implications, whether SALT is reintroduced, whether advanced refundings and various other programs that could have a dramatic impact on both demand and supply in the municipal market. But it seems like people have, have gone through this uh, uh, Sort of waiting, waiting and seeing, uh, waiting to see what the final package will look like for a fair amount of time. That people are like in the show me, show me mode. <laughs> no more rumors to buy. Now you just have to wait to see the facts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll talk to you next week and see if there's uh, more updates there. Great. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Investing in America's infrastructure drives our country forward. Municipal bonds help strengthen America's backbone and connect us all through essential investment in local opportunities. At Build America Mutual, we maximize the safety and stability of municipal bond investments. That means a bright future for our communities and investors' portfolios. Learn more about the exceptional security of BAM-insured bonds 